Now we'll go ahead and take a look at one of the base functionalities here in BIM 360 field, issue tracking. I'll go ahead and hit the go to button in the bottom left and tap on issues. So issues typically have a negative connotation here on a job site. Something's wrong, something's broken, something's deficient. You want to document it, take a photo, mark up a plan, assign it out to an uh, individual or party, and then track it through completion. That's certainly one thing that will enable you to do with issues here, but it's also an opportunity for you to document things that were done correctly, done correctly the first time. So to create an issue, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit this drop down arrow from uh, what we call our location hierarchy. This is what we're going to use to specify exactly where on our project the, the issue is that needs uh, resolution. Again, might need resolution, could be conforming as well. So I'll hit this drop down arrow and you'll see the hierarchy that I've built for my sample project. I can now tap one of these blue arrows to the right and dive down a little deeper into that, that hierarchy. So let's say we have an issue of building A, floor 2, and room 201. So we can come into room 201 and we can see the existing issues here. We can see the status of those issues and the responsible party. Again, tracking these through completion. To go ahead and create a new one, we'll hit this plus button in the top right that's going to bring up what we call our issue detail form. This is where we're going to come in and we're going to provide all the information here that we'll then be able to distribute, manage, and report out on um, downstream. So it pulls up our keyboard. We're now in the description field. I can type in exactly what's going on. Uh, so say hypothetically we have a, you know, a dent in the drywall. Go ahead and type what's wrong and the corrective action that needs to be taken. I can now come down here and use what we call our issue type field to classify this issue. This is a way for us to differentiate certain issues apart from others. We're then going to be able to report out on certain issues apart from others, um, really giving us the ability to really manage the data that's captured in the field a lot more effectively. So I can click into this issue type field and you can see the sample issue types that I've loaded onto my job. We'll work with your team to provide uh, the issue types and definitions around each uh, for your particular project or organization. So you can see the different issue types that I've loaded here, each of which has a separate meeting, separate use case, um, and ultimately I have the ability to report out on them separately based on these associations. So I can come in here and I can say, you know, hypothetically this one is a part of our work, uh, our finishes work list here. I can come into company and I have my list of companies preloaded here so I can select the responsible party. The users of this party will be sent an email notification of this outstanding item. They'll know where it is, what needs to be done. They'll be able to get out there and address it and turn it around a lot quicker. So date created. It knows that as well as uh, myself as the author here from my login. Root cause. This is a, a newer function in the system. It's, the, it's a way for us to identify the underlying reason for why this issue came about in the first place. So I can come in here and you can see the sample root causes that I've put in here into my sample project. It's really a good way for us to document the, over, or the underlying big picture reason for why the issue came about. So you can then put some, uh, some metrics, some data around it. You have 40% of your issues, for example, came about last month because of this, this, and this. You know, what can we do moving forward? What corrective action can we take to make sure we don't see these issues pop up in, in the future months? So I can select, again, uh, a, an item here from my sample list of root causes. So due date. We have here the ability to select the date for which this issue we expect it to be uh, addressed by Don's Drywall and Paint. So it's really a great way for us to come in here and prioritize our subcontractor's work for them. Let's say hypothetically we're punching out this room here on Thursday uh, the 11th. We can give this issue a due date of Tuesday the 9th so our subcontractors know they need to have it done by then so we can go back out and reinspect it Wednesday so we know when we're walking the site with our owner, our architect, third party, we have this issue resolved in a timely manner uh, when we need it to be taken care of. So location, it knows the location because we define it from our hierarchy I can come in a location detail and specify a little more clearly where I am in room 201. So now I can come up here 
and, and supplement this issue with attachments. We have quite a few attachment options. We have the ability to take a photo. So you can snap a photo. You also, as you can see in the bottom left, have the ability to pull in um, documents from our document library, our iPad, photos, as well as a hyperlink. Once I attach this photo, I can actually come into it, I can recaption it, I can tag it, a variety of markup tools here as well. So quite a few markup tools, I have the ability to come in and, and really accent this document, provide this photo to my subcontractor, to my third party, indicating exactly what needs to be done. So that's issue tracking. You can see here we, we created our issue, we provided the corrective action, we assigned it out to a subcontractor, took a photo, marked it up, and we'll use this status field to track it through completion. A few other ways that we have of creating issues are using templates. These are pre-populated with, with commonly reoccurring issues. For commonly reoccurring issues. So we can see I've actually broken these down, down by trade, and all it takes is a simple tap of a button and you can see in the background that issue is created, it has a description, it has an issue type, and it already knows the responsible party. A really great way for us to expedite the issue creation process out in the field for some of those commonly seen reoccurring issues. The final way that we have the ability to create an issue is by using push pins here. This enables us to drop a push pin and specify exactly where on a floor plan, on an elevation, on any document in our library where a specific issue arises. That's all for issue tracking. Next we're going to take a look at our checklist module.